Thomas joined by Ali Moreno and Stevie Nichol. After all the drama that we saw in the quarterfinals, this game was actually pretty straightforward. It was Argentina who took the lead via a penalty in the 34th minute, and that would really set the tone for the rest of the game. Croatia had no response. Nice individual goal from Alvarez five minutes after Argentina took the lead to make it two, going into the break. And then a fine assist from Messi after a brilliant individual run would set up Alvarez for a second. Argentina cruise past Croatia. Well, there for us was uh, Shaka Hislop. We also welcome as Frank LaBeouf uh, as well. Um, I want to start with you, Stevie. This was all pretty simple in the end, wasn't it? Well, I think it was really simple in the end because Croatia in the final third just really didn't have anything to offer. You know, as far as football's concerned, Croatia probably played the better football. But again... Football's about what you do when you've got the ball, and it's about taking your chances when you create them. Obviously, sometimes you can get a little bit of luck that Alvarez got with the second one. Mm. But the truth is, Argentina made some chances and took them. And Croatia, well, up into the final third, after that, didn't know what to do. Once the penalty was scored, it felt that was obviously a big change. In I'll take it about 15 minutes earlier. There's a shot of Lionel Messi bent over, sort of holding the back of his legs, stretching. And at that point, Argentina were very much in trouble because Croatia had most of the ball, no real reaction from Argentina. And I'm seeing Lionel Messi stretching his hamstring. I'm thinking, uh-oh. And I mean, uh-oh. If he's off the field, there's no chance. And so then I watch him for the next few minutes, and he's not really moving all that well. He's still he's, holding the Yeah, he's him. not really sprinting. He's walking around, slow jogs. I'm thinking, well, this guy doesn't seem like he is alive on the field right now. He's barely hanging on. And then the penalty happened. He steps up, takes a penalty, perfectly taken. And it's almost as if this guy who had been walking, slow jogging, there was a life that came from nowhere. From nowhere. He is, in, in my opinion, the best example in the modern history of the game, a player whose body language doesn't tell you what he's about to do. <laughs> because in every sequence today, you looked at him and said, is he even, is he even, is he out here? What is he? See, he's walking over there, he's walking over here, he's walking over here. And then whenever he felt like there was a moment in which he could impact the game by either being an outlet for Argentina or perhaps the guy that was able to create the chance or perhaps the guy that was going to finish the chance, all of a sudden, life, everywhere. He goes back to 10 years ago. That ability of Lionel Messi to turn it on and off in a game is amazing to me. I don't know how he does it. But when it mattered the most, he made the play of the tournament in that third goal. Shaka, it was always going to be about Lionel Messi, be it good or bad. It was very, very good today. It really was. I thought it was an outstanding performance from Lionel Messi in particular. Uh, Julian Alvarez, of course, played, played his part. I, I thought he was also exceptional in a game that I, I, I think Argentina struggled in, in the early parts. Croatia controlled the ball, but... Never really testing Martinez, but we've kind of come to expect that from, from Croatia. Remember, they only had the one shot on target against Brazil. Um, so even though they controlled the ball, never really troubled Argentina. And you just felt that that first goal was, was going to be defining. Once the referee pointed to the spot and Lionel Messi did as, as, as he did, it, it, was, it was pretty comfortable from, from Argentina then on in. I think this game defined by that first goal and, in my opinion, a lot of question marks about that penalty. How cold are you, Shaq? <laughs> it's a little chilly here. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> somebody, somebody told us that we weren't going to wear the jacket. Yeah, yeah. he said, I'll take the jacket off, don't worry, before we start. That isn't happening. Right, well, let's go. Shaq mentioned then, obviously, the penalty, a defining moment in the game. Frank, for you, was it a penalty? Uh, not for me, not for me, uh, um, because I think uh, uh, Alvarez has the ball away from him. He tries to shoot, then he goes into the goalkeeper, where the goalkeeper even put his hands down, we can see, and stop his, uh, his, his movement. So, of course, there will be contact, but the contact is not initiated by the goalkeeper, it's initiated by the, play, the striker who lost the ball. 
But, you know, I understand that in modern football and uh, people, I was with Adil Rami, uh, a, a former defender uh, for France, who said that for him it was a penalty. Well, you know, that's uh, open to, to, to debate. I think you're going to have to look at that goal again, Frank, <laughs> for the penalty. Because there is absolutely no question the goalkeeper's body goes towards Alvarez. I mean, it's not even close. And it is a penalty, and it's a penalty because the way the game's refereed today, it's a penalty. When I played, it wasn't a penalty. If you had the opportunity to get a shot off and then you got clattered, it wasn't regarded as a penalty. Mm. And, and I'm going to guess in the 90s when you were playing Frank, it was the same thing. The problem now is... The way the game's refereed, that's looked upon this as a like penalty. It's a defining kind of image. Yeah, there. there, there's no question that the goalkeeper's body goes towards Alvarez. And not only does he, does he catch him with his, his upper part of his body, he throws his right leg out as well. So, I'm sorry, Frankie, no. I think you're going to have to go and watch the replay again. Uh, goalkeeper's view? Yeah. Excuse me, I think, Stevie, you have to go so back I... to, uh, to also watch the video. But whatever, <laughs> let, let Shaka defend himself. If, defend his union. Sorry, Shaka. I, I, I'm, I'm with Frank on this one. I, I thought Levakovic got to a spot and held that spot. I, it, it was close, but I thought Levakovic <sighs> just about held his spot. And then it was I the momentum of, of Alvarez that, 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 caused, that, that well, caused the collision. I mean, none of you two seen the replay. <laughs> I mean, seriously, the goalkeeper held his spot. Really? Um, Look I at the picture, Shaka. That's <laughs> all you got. <laughs> like it tells you. Where's the goalie going there? Um, Ali. One hundred percent a penalty. <laughs> 100% of course. a penalty. Of course. Livakovic is leaning to the right and continues to lean to the right onto the path of Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez is now running past the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper gives him no space for him to go anywhere but to run into the goalkeeper at that point. But that contact is initiated by the fact that Livakovic is leaning to his right and sticking his leg out to his right. I think it's a penalty. Uh, Shaka? <laughs> Um, no. I, yeah, listen, I, 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 stand by, I stand by what I said. And, and while, I, while I say I don't think it was a penalty, I was, I, it didn't surprise me in the slightest to see the referee point to the spot. Um, listen, I, I think Croatia have every right to complain. There's been a lot of compl been complaining about referees whenever teams exit. We might Argentina complain about the referee when, when they won uh, against the <laughs> Netherlands. There was a challenge about, about five minutes in on Argentina's right-hand side, uh, Croatia's left, right in front of the Croatia bench, that the referee just didn't even bat an eyelid towards. And I, I thought um, I, I thought it was an awful challenge, deserving of a booking. The referee didn't blow his whistle, didn't come back to it. And I, I just thought, uh-oh, here we go again. Um, so then... On, on that, on, on the penalty shot, as I say, to see the referee kind of um, take that decision and point to the spot didn't, didn't surprise me. But I, I stand, by, stand by what I said. As, as a goalkeeper, I, I didn't think Levakovic did much wrong. I, I'm interested to ask both of you. So if that, if that happens on the halfway line where a player hits the ball past the defender and then gets clattered like that, is the referee going to give a foul or is he going to wave play on? Um, well, if, if, a, if, a, if a defender is standing on the halfway line in a spot and a striker runs at him, flicks the ball around him oh, and runs the into the defender, right. no, it's not a foul. No. <laughs> well, but, but, I, but that's listen, what I've been I, saying actually, throughout. Actually, if you're going with the spot argument then you would be correct. I would suggest it wouldn't be a foul either. Unfortunately, he wasn't on a spot. <laughs> I don't think maybe. anyone is going to change Maybe, because, gonna maybe change you it. didn't see the video right. But whatever. Wow. Maybe I needed subtitles Size on that. it. Uh, Frank, as a man who, who took a lot of penalties in your career, that was a bit special, though, wasn't it, given the moment? That's the best penalty I ever I would say it's a perfect one, you know, almost top corner, impossible to the, even Shaka Islop at his best to catch it. Uh, it's, uh, that was um, a mature uh, from a special person. I mean, uh, I really enjoyed that penalty. Like I enjoy overall, you know, what Argentina did. Um, 
you know, I can't believe that I saw, and I'm talking about Croatia, the same team was absolutely perfect defensively against Brazil, against Brazil. And being so bad, so poor today, and we're going to talk about the second goal, which is like yeah. a, a gift from Christmas, uh, before Christmas, and also on the third goal, because you have to see Lovren not helping his teammate, struggling with uh, the fantastic Messi. So, Let, yeah, great day for Mr. Messi because Mr. Messi is Mr. Messi. Uh, let, let's talk about, shall we, the, the, the second goal. Because when you saw it first time, you're like, wow, mm -hmm. this is one of the best goals that we've ever seen in the World uh, Cup. No. And then you look at the replays and, and no. just the defending <laughs> is so bad, Frank. And as you say, they were so good against Brazil. Why such a stark difference? I don't know, you should ask them, you know, I don't know what happened to their heads where they were all working together, compensating, you know, covering each other. And that Alvarez goal, you have two mistakes from two good players, very good players. But one is not, I don't know, going the good way. The second one tried to kick the ball, misses it. Well, I guess he's a, Souza is a left hand, is left footed, but still incomprehensible at that level. I mean, that's a real gift. That's crazy. That's two big mistakes in the semi-final of a World Cup. And uh, in front of Alvarez, who is on fire right now, uh, uh, well, you pay the price. It's a gift I, that goes all, can, the way back to the, all the way back to the fact that this was a free kick, a, a set piece for yeah. Croatia in the attack. When they were starting kind of sort of to get back in the game, they had absorbed that first punch from the penalty kick, and then, okay, all right, let's see if we can keep possession of the ball. Let's see if we can go on the attack and have they do. They, act, they actually have a set piece. From their own set piece, Julian Alvarez just continues to run. Nobody steps to him. By the, hand, by the time they step to him, it's a, the best example of the touch and tackle, 2.0 version from Julian Alvarez, that he is fortunate on the first one, he's fortunate on the second one, but there's nothing fortunate about the finish. While he was out of control and a touch and tackle time and time again, when he came to finish, it was actually very classy from Julian Alvarez. The class that he did not show in the first uh, attempt for the penalty kick, he showed in this finish. Classy, no problem, 2 nothing, and it's a run that had happened for 60 yards. Give credit to Julian Alvarez. The defending from Croatia was bad throughout the course of the match. I, th I think, unfortunately, you have to look at Lovren on both goals. Right. You know, and, and again, Lovren, through no fault of his own, is probably three years, maybe more, past his best. And particularly on the first goal, when he plays on Alvarez by, I'm going to say 10, it might even have been 15. That's a classic case of a defender who knows he's done for pace, who drops off and nobody else does. Right. And then the second one, he's obviously thinking about the first one and his composure's gone and he has a swipe at it and misses. So, again, unfortunately for Lovren, as I said, he's past his best. And when you're past your best, those things happen. 3-0, uh, of course, would be a bit special. What an assist from Messi. What was it like in real life, Shaq? Um, it, it really was incredible to watch as, as it happened. That's the side of the stadium that I was on, so I got a really good view of that. And it, he, he makes those moves look so easy. It's, it's, as the thing with Lionel Messi, as I say, so I'm, I'm kind of above him almost. And you, you see the jink, you see how he kind of goes back, as though he's, he's going to go back outside and, and is a little bit disinterested. And then that little change of feet, that, that dip of the shoulder and that acceleration uh, it was, was simply special. Um, it, it, really, it, it came at a time that things were really comfortable for, for Argentina, the, the, the game was done and, and you felt Croatia had, had, had all but, but, but given up. And that really was the icing on the cake. It, it was, it was re I had a, I can't see now, I had a really good seat to, to, to look at that. And it, it made it all the more special. It was the full use of all the resources available to Lionel Messi at this point in his career. The first touch away from <laughs> pressure, turns via the old. Now, in a moment in which he turns via the old, He's going to run away from him, but realizes that at this point in his career, I can't quite run away the manner in which I did in the past. So now I have to go with another dip of the shoulder and I have to turn him again. And I'm going to slow him down so that then I can change space with a little hesitation. Slow him down so that then I can create separation once again. And that little last burst that we saw from Lionel Messi, 
going back to the 19th minute, when I told you the guy was holding his hamstring, okay. after halftime, when he seemed to be holding his hamstring again, I did not see this change of pace left in this man's game. And it was the hesitation, dip of the shoulder, turn away, and more importantly, he gets to a position where now you have to deliver a cross and a pass with the right pace, and he does so to Julian Alvarez. And he go, here you go, Julian. Make yourself famous. Let's go win this thing. Well, how do you defend that? I'm going to stick up for Valdiol a little bit here. Right. Because when you're up against a guy like Messi, you can't afford any sort of flaw because he'll do you. But I feel for Valiol because he's got that, that mask on his face. Right. And for anybody who's never played with a mask on their face, you, you can't see right down in front of yourself. Right. It, it definitely blocks you, your view for things that are right down. And so that means that when you're defending Messi or anybody else, you need to be able to see the ball first and foremost. And so that makes it difficult. And as I said, when you're playing against a guy like Messi, you can't afford to give him a, a centimetre. And of course, he did. And then once he's in the box, you can't touch him. Yeah. So it's the game. The game's over for Vardiol. The genius of the hesitation, though, to slow Vardiol down, so that Vardiol thinks, well, he can't turn the corner on me anymore. That hesitation, and then Vardiol said, okay, I got him. No, you don't, because the moment you slow down, he took off, turned the corner. See you guys later. Frank, you were saying before he needed help. Yes, definitely. I think Lovren, Lovren made, made two mistakes, you know. When, he's, when Vesey is going towards the goal, first he should have gone there to help, you know, the, def the Croatian defender to cover uh, that player. Then Messi goes back, you know, shows his back to uh, the Croatian goal. So Lovren decides to go in the middle of the, of the goal in case, you know, uh, Messi makes a cross. But Messi turns on, the, on, the, on his left, you know, and goes back to the goal. And then Lovren keeps on dropping where he has to go and block, you know, uh, that, that uh, uh, left side from his defender, but doesn't do it. And as Stevie mentioned, when Messi in that, is in that position, you can't touch him anymore because he's... Uh, his body is, so, is quite small, so if you touch him, he's going to go on the floor. It's impossible for a big, tall guy to cope with that. You won't get the ball, you, and you, if you don't have somebody who helps you to block one space, you, 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 you're done. And this is what happened. And, uh, and because he was on his own, he couldn't cope with the situation. Shaq, I, I don't know if you've been to an Argentina game before, but it didn't feel like quite the same intensity that maybe we've seen in previous rounds. But I imagine uh, the fans obviously just as happy that Argentina make it through to the final. Yeah, um, listen, I've, I've seen a few teams play and a lot about Argentina and their fans today reminded me of, of Brazil, Croatia, Brazil fans. Argentinian fans outnumbered the Croatians pretty much by, by the same proportion that, that you saw Brazil, Croatia, but the stadium is twice as big. The, the thing, Argentina's fans have been second best probably only to Morocco. What it felt like was, um, whereas Moroccan, Moroccan fans are here to celebrate whatever, whatever happens, they are going to celebrate. There's, there's a bit of expectation, a bit more pressure on Argentina as it was in, in Brazil. And, and you kind of felt that with, with, with the fan base. And then the game was easy. I, I, I want to say the game finished easy enough. So the, all the celebrating was done during the 90 minutes. So that kind of contrasted to what you saw from the last round against the Dutch, where you know they're leading and then it goes to 2 2. Um, when, the, when the game is finally won on, on penalty kicks, there is this explosion of emotion from, from the Argentine fans. There wasn't that today because, you know, once they, once they go one up, as, as I say, even though Croatia continued to control the ball, they never really threatened. So it just kind of held a steady level throughout, throughout the 90 minutes and, and didn't have that one kind of defining explosion as, as, as I phrased it. Dr. Shaka Hislop, of course, sells himself very much as a, as a man of the people, uh -huh. man of the community. Uh -huh unless he has to talk to them. He got his producer to speak to fans after the game. <laughs> like, it was too... I don't want to say too easy, but I was expecting something much harder. And it wasn't so much harder, so I don't know what's going on. Croatia did nothing, really. The first 15 minutes, they, they had the ball, and that was it. Next Sunday, inshallah, we will be champions. 
Vamos Argentina, sabes que yo te quiero. Vamos, 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 I, I was I was holding the camera. Shaka, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. have you seen anyone without a messy shirt when it comes to the Argentinian support? Hmm. Um, I I I don't think I have. I'll be honest. I saw one guy in a Maradona shirt, but I, I've I've not seen anybody who has a has a name on their shirt. Um, it's it's messy or or bust. I, I I'll be honest. Every World Cup has a moment, right? And for Argentina, unless something dramatically special happens in the final, today's Messi's assist, that was the moment. Right. For Lionel Messi. we thought Neymar's moment was going to be obviously the equaliser. Yeah, well, uh, apparently that didn't quite work out. Yes. Today's moment for Messi. Leandro Paredes, who had come off the field already, runs all the way around the field from the bench to get to Messi, no, and he's holding him as if he's holding a piece of gold, as if he's holding a baby, like, don't ever leave me, Lionel. We are depending on you, don't ever leave. You are incredibly special to us, and we're gonna take care of you for as long as we possibly can. That is the moment for Lionel Messi in this World Cup so far. And let me just go back to the penalty for a second. It's a change in technique again from Lionel Messi, nice. and it's something that we have talked about time and time again. He had been doing the old slow run up, staring the goalkeeper down, and this one is like, I'm not staring anybody down, I'm sticking in the top corner. And it's pressure. It's pressure and somehow being able to deliver in a moment of pressure, which I think, again, goes to the greatness at this point of Lionel Messi. Was there anybody else other than me can, can, that wasn't sure that he was going to score? I, I, because I'll tell you what, when, when they flashed up, all the penalty kicks he's taken. Yeah, there was some red. There was a lot, of red, there was a lot of red in yeah, that. Yeah. And I've I, and I've always been a little wary of, yes. of Messi taking yeah. penalties. Yeah, he's missed one already in this I, tournament. I, obviously, I was. I can tell you. I, I, you know, when Ronaldo takes a penalty, I don't even think about it. But I must admit, when Messi takes a penalty, I, I'm not so sure. Go on, Shaq. Yeah. I, let, let me. Well, first of all, on on the penalty and. No question, it, it was an outstanding penalty. Yeah. I think the more amazing thing, as, as, as TV just touched on, is that Lionel Messi has already missed one in this tournament. And missing a, a penalty in a tournament such as this, I, I, I think causes nerves, or, or should cause nerves, and, and, and can, can break many people. But Lionel Messi seemed to only get better after that miss. I, I think that's the amazing thing with, 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 how, with this penalty run that he's been on, ever since he missed. And, and just to disagree with Ali, I, I think the defining moment, the defining moment of this tournament is Lionel Messi's pass for the opening goal against the Netherlands. Don't get me wrong, the third goal today was absolutely special. It was Messi-esque. But that pass for the opening goal is, I, I, I'm not sure I've seen a better pass in, in football ever, let alone at a stage like this. I like this. I like this, Frank. Which was the better assist? You know, tonight I've decided to follow Shaka. <laughs> oh, <laughs> for whatever he's going to say. There you go. Yeah, well done, Frank. Well <laughs> done, Frank. Yeah. No, but I, I agree in the fact that, that that assist that he made against the Netherlands was very special because it's like... It never looks. We 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 show a close up on him where he never looks on the on the on his right side, but he knows that the guy is there. That's absolutely crazy. It's what I liked about it that he already informed himself that the guy was about to do that was already in position and he will receive the ball. So everything was anticipated. That was absolutely fantastic. Today. And I agree with Ali, it's perfect because what he did, that he find the solution for himself to be able to give that assist uh, with his right foot. But it's just for me less spectacular, let's say. Uh, Stephen? I'm going with Ali. Mm. Really? Hey, hey. Because... It's a very frank check against you two. Yeah, well, because, you know, yeah. if, you, uh, if you're Vardio yeah. and you're Croatian, You've got Messi exactly where you want him. Right. You've got him facing, a, facing the crowd, facing the touchline, away from the goal, 
and you've got your best defender. Arguably the best, the best defender in the tournament. Arguably the best defender in the tournament. With giving him nothing. He's got nowhere to go. There's no way he should get out. Shouldn't happen. There's only one. Is, it, is there anybody else you can think of in football right now who could get from that position but could you, to where he's laying the ball back for a goal? the same argument. Is there anyone in football who could have made that assist against the Dutch in that manner? No, well, because I think there's a, I think there's a little piece of good fortune in the past when it went went through the the defender's legs. Right. Because I don't see, I'm not I don't believe he tried to put it through his legs. I I just think that from absolutely nothing he's created this goal. Uh, this is one.